Hello everyone, my name is Mechanic here. Today we are going to be replacing the engine in this 2003 F350 with a 6 liter diesel. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and unbolt the back seat. The front bolts are a T55 Torx, the one on each side, and then same for the back here one on each side as well there's going to be an 18 millimeter you can use a long socket with a ratchet to get to it the uh, front seat belt is a t45 and then the front seat bolts are t55 as well same as the back and here's the front bolts here and then you can just slide your seat all the way back to get to the front ones and then slide your seat all the way forward to get to the back ones and here in the back of the seat we have a t55 over here and a 18 millimeter underneath this little cap right here. You can just pull this right off. You can get to it easier. If you slide the seat forward, it's a lot easier to get to. On the back. See that just comes off like that. And then you can reach in there and grab your little metal thing off the top that holds that little plastic piece on. And it'll come right off. All right, so underneath the seat, you have this little connector for your power stuff on your seat, your power seat. So you just push in that little tab right there and pull apart and it'll come right apart. For our center console, there are going to be four eight millimeter bolts underneath. As you see right there, there's just four. You just gotta reach down in your center console and you can get to them. And then go ahead and you can use one of these little screw, you can use this flathead screwdriver will work just fine. Um, your little things inside your doors here you can just reach under there and pop these little clips up you're gonna need to pull your carpet up so you're gonna pop these out see these little clips right here you'll just kind of pop those out and see now you get to your carpet and what I did here is I went ahead and put my bolts back in place so I would not lose them and then now you can just grab your carpet and pull it out because you're gonna need to get to the bolts to that hold the body onto the frame underneath the carpet here, so you have to pull your carpet up to get to them. All right, so there are two of these little clips, um, one on underneath the driver's seat, one underneath the passenger seat. Go ahead and get unscrew them, and then take one of these little, or use this flathead screwdriver, use one of these tools right here, just uh, pop it out just like that. And then here are the body mount bolts here um, passenger side ones are 21 millimeter driver side are 24 millimeter i don't know why they're different but they for some reason do that you can just pull these little caps off you can use a flathead screwdriver or try to get their hands either one um, you see here you're gonna have three inside the cab one all the way in the back one in the middle there and then one here up here in the front all right now we're going to want to remove the parking brake cable we're gonna remove it on the right side, right where I'm pointing there. That way we can fit it through the frame, right through there, see that? We're gonna to wanna to fit through there, so make sure you move it on the right side of that. Here is the transmission shifter. You're gonna press in a little tab on top and then you can pull it right out. And then next up here is the little bracket that holds it on there. You're gonna take your pliers and pinch it right here and then you can pull it through the bracket. You'll see it up there. You're just going to pinch it right there and it'll slide right through. Here we have a ground. This is on the driver side, or I'm sorry, the passenger side underneath the door. Make sure you get all your little grounds like this. You want to leave them behind and get them stretched and broken. Here, I'm just showing that uh, go ahead and put your bolts back in when you're done. Um, that way it'll make yourself easier, you know, when you're going to put stuff back together. And here I am draining the coolant out of the radiator. You can just unscrew your little drain here and it'll drain your fluid out and you also want to go ahead and drain your engine oil all right so you're going to want to remove all these little hoses on top just little stuff like this um, i have the batteries removed now you're going to remove want to remove both of them after you're done doing your seats because you're going to need to slide them back and forth to get your bolts out All right, so here I'm gonna go ahead and remove the little shield here on top so we can get to our stuff down below. All 
right, go ahead and remove the radiator mounts on top. Two bolts holding each one. I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in there so I don't lose them. Again, like I said, go ahead and try to put as many bolts back in place as you can, that way you don't lose them. Here we are removing the air intake tube, eight millimeter holding the little clamp on. And here we are removing the air filter. You're gonna wanna remove all your air intake and all that stuff on the hoses on top. I'm not gonna be able to, I, I didn't shoot everything, taking everything out. I try to get as much stuff I can, as I can, so it's gonna be like a guide. I'm not gonna be able to you know, get every single bolt that I took out, but for the most part, I got as much as I could take out. So take this little reservoir out here, hose on top, a ho big hose on the bottom, two bolts on top holding it, and then it should just slide right out. To remove your grill, there's gonna be four Phillips head screwdrivers or screws on top, I'm sorry, screws on top, and you can remove that. And that slides right out, there's gonna be little clips on the bottom. And then to remove your grill, as you see here where I'm on the right side and I'm on the left, taking out these bolts right by the headlights there. And there's also gonna be some Phillips head uh, screws underneath the headlights there. And then there are more, uh, I believe 10 millimeter, 10 or eight, millimeter bolts on the side um, on the outsides of the headlights as you will see here in a minute unless I already moved them okay looks like we already removed them oh no we didn't okay take them out here <laughs> So we remove all four of those bolts and then like I said a little two Phillips head on the bottom of the headlights there's two on each side and then there are see if you see down below I don't think you see it from here or not below your headlights there are these little plastic clips I'll show you here in a minute up close you got to push down with a pair of uh, or some screwdrivers and you can get it free of your headlights and your uh, grill assembly here, or your grill support. Okay, so here I'm showing where the bolts were. See, so here's the two on, two of the ones on the outside, and then you're gonna have the two. Here's the ones in the middle here. Two right there. You're gonna remove your bulbs from your lower headlights and also your upper headlights. All remove all your bulbs. Here's that little plastic thing I was talking about. You have to push down with your with your uh, screwdrivers. I went ahead and removed the brackets holding on the condenser to make it a little easier to get that thing out. There's just one bolt holding it. There's a little bracket on each side, so go ahead and remove those and make it a little easier for you. Here we are removing the battery tray. There's two bolts on the side right there. I know you can't see them, but there's gonna be two bolts in there and then two bolts on the bottom of the tray. and then the tray will lift right out. Here I'm moving the another hose here. I believe that's an intake hose there. You just uh, remove the little bolts on top to hold the brackets or the clamps on. There's a little nuts on top there and you can pull your hose apart and then remove it down below. I know you can't see right now where we're reaching down in there. You're gonna remove your, I believe it's going to the intercooler. So remove it there. Here I'm moving another lower the battery tray on the opposite side this is the passenger side here and then now we are moving the taking the bolts out for the windshield windshield wiper windshield wiper fluid reservoir here now that'll just come right out you're gonna remove the electrical connector and the hose that goes to it and it'll pull right out and now we're, we are removing this bracket right here there are two bolts down in there that hold that on. I, I believe they're 13 or something like that. Can't exactly remember what exactly what size they are, but something around there.
here moving this intake tube here just to remove them top and bottom all right now we're moving the front bumper you just take off the bolts in the front four bolts on the front there are two bolts on each side where I'm taking off right there one on this side and I'm gonna go up to the other side and take off that side I know you can't see what I'm doing right now but here in a minute I'm gonna show you up close so give me a minute here Okay, and I'm taking the bumper off All right, here's the ones at the front again put the bolts back so you don't lose them and here's that little side bolt I was talking about there's a little bracket behind the bumper that you have to remove that bolt to get up here I'm just showing you you have to remove these two bolts on each side to I believe this is a transmission cooler you're gonna have some bolts underneath right here that hold this cooler on and then some little bolts on the inside of that that hold on the smaller cooler right here remove all of those Go ahead and remove that bigger cooler right there. You're going to have to, you'll see later on in the, in the video that we have to anyway. So go ahead and remove that cooler right there in the front. Okay, here I'm showing you the AC lines. You have to remove these two on the condenser where you took the condenser out. Make sure you drain your Freon. We actually just undid the lines, but that's not recommended to do that. So drain it properly. Don't do it like we did. Okay, so here are the electrical connectors on the driver side. You're gonna have three of these ones going to the computer here, and you're gonna have a whole bunch of electrical connectors over there. Take all those out. Also, in this corner right here is where your power steering reservoir is. You're gonna remove all those hoses, and you can slide your power steering out. And there's gonna be a little bracket you have to remove as well that holds your power steering on, or your, not your power steering, but your, you know, your, your reservoir. I was showing your brake lines. Remove three of those brake lines, and then down in here. We have a drive, not a drive shaft, a steering shaft. Remove that. There's gonna be a bolt on top of that steering shaft right there that holds it on. Remove those two uh, lines that are on top of the power steering there, or your steering rack, or um, okay. Remove all that. All those electrical connectors underneath underneath the truck. You're gonna have your radiator hose couple oil cooler lines you're going to remove remove both of those now to get your radiator out you have to push see right if you look you see your fan shroud is right against your radiator so you're going to push back on your fan shroud to pull your radiator up you have to take out your radiator first before you can take out your fan shroud there are two separate parts here i'll show you in a minute here is the battery cable we went and removed those so it's not in the way you can just remove it on that one side put it over here so it's not in your way and then here over here remember I was showing you that they are separate so remove your radiator first and then remove that little fan shroud which I have sitting right beside it see that you're gonna remove this AC line on top of this thing little box here because the that goes to the pump down below and you're gonna have to or your compressor you're going to remove that AC line so you can get your body off and now we are moving this little computer on the valve cover. I believe those were 10 millimeter nuts on there. Again, putting the nuts back on the valve cover so we don't lose them. Here we are removing the, oh, so the um, battery cable got twisted around this AC line that I just told you to remove. So we just took this little line off right here, just took it apart right here to, uh, as you see, we'll slide that around there like that okay so here are the body mounts in the front all the way in the front here you're going to remove two of those those are pretty big i think those are 18 millimeter you're going to have one on each side so right down in there make sure you move those here we are you have to remove the that little hose there it's a little coolant um heater hose i believe there and then now we're going to go ahead and begin lifting up the body. So here's the thing. When you're lifting this thing up, you have to lift up a little bit. Make sure you're not stretching anything. Keep checking stuff. It's good to have somebody. Uh, in this case, we had three of us doing this, so it was a lot easier. Having one person lift it, two people looking out. Just lift a little bit. You know, check everything. Make sure everything is disconnected. Also, like when you, if you, even if you disconnect stuff, say your, you know, your power steering lines, they can still get hung up on something and then stretch. So you gotta lift it a little bit, check everything out, and make sure 
you know, everything is disconnected. Also, we found later on that we had a couple vacuum hoses uh, over to the left side of the passenger side. We had a couple vacuum hoses and then some other um, wires and, and stuff like that. So you're just going to go through and, and just keep checking and, and thoroughly check and make sure that nothing is caught. You go underneath through the wheel well and see here I found another wire underneath here that I had to remove underneath the driver's side there. Like I said, just keep lowering it, or raising it a little at a time, so you don't, you know, break anything. Keep checking it. Here we have the brake lines started to get hung up on the body, but as we were keeping a lookout on it, we found them and got them out of the way. So no big deal. Just make sure you look out. Here we are moving the that that cooler I told you to remove before because we're going to remove it anyway. Go ahead and remove it now so it's not a headache later on. But there's just little hoses on it. You have to remove, after you remove those bolts there's just two little hoses you have to take off. Okay. So make sure you remove all those electrical connectors in the front and like I said underneath. You'll see in a minute here that there are two more electrical connectors underneath you have to remove. Also those electrical connectors by uh, underneath the reservoir for the power steering and the coolant, there are the let all the electrical connectors. Make sure you move those from the body. They're going to be snapped on there, just like held in place. Even after you disconnect them, make sure they're all disconnected from the body, not just you know the electrical connections, but just like the mounts that hold them together. If that makes any sense, just make sure you look in there, make sure everything's loose, and then you know, separate everything, make sure like the body stuff is with body stuff and not twisted around the stuff that's supposed to go with the frame. Yeah, we good to go. See here, I'm removing those two wires I was telling you about. So like I said, I didn't get everything in the video what you had to take off. There are still a few things on top of the engine, like a couple brackets here and there they had to remove. Just look out for that stuff. It's just hard to, you know, get everything on video just because there's so much stuff to take off, so. Anyway, thank you for watching. If this video is helpful, please give it a like. Be sure to subscribe to see all my latest videos. And part two is right up here in the corner. As you see right here in the right corner. If you want to click there and see part two as we continue on this 6 liter diesel engine swap. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.